Hello and welcome to this tutorial about using the vector scope in After Effects. Many people don't realize that there is actually a vector scope in After Effects that you can use and when they do know that it's there they're not really sure how to interpret it and set it up properly. So this tutorial is to show you where it is, how to set it up so it's working for your system and then a little bit about how to use it. Now all I have at the moment is a composition with one layer in it which has got some text in. just want to show you that the level I've chosen for this text is fully saturated. So it's a red of 255, so it's as saturated as it can go. In other words, it's got 100% saturation. The colour is as saturated as it can be. The brightness is also saturated, but the colour is as saturated as it can be. And I'm going to click OK. And to this layer I have added one effect. And the effect I've added, I went to Effects. I went to Synthetic Aperture and I selected SA Color Finesse 3 and I click that to apply it to my layer and then in my effects controls it's applied. Now the next thing we need to do is click the full interface and I just want to say the first time you click this it takes a while to start up but after that it usually starts a lot quicker. I've already done mine so it should start fairly quickly but don't be worried if it takes a while to start first time. So click on full interface and up comes the interface. Just very briefly, before I go any further, in a previous tutorial on synthetic aperture I made a mistake. I said that the hue offset wheels aren't available in the full interface. A number of people immediately jumped on my case and I just want to show you that under HSL, under hue offsets, there are the wheels. My mistake, I apologise. Now, in these displays up here we have the combo tab which has got a combination of different graphs and the one that we're interested in is this one here which is called the vector scope. Now to see the vector scope on its own you can click down here where it says vector scope and there is your vector scope with one line representing the colour, the chrominance of the red in this piece of footage over here which is just my test text. Please note it's going way beyond this target box here. These are target boxes for red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta. So effectively this is a colour wheel if we just quickly look at the hue offset wheels here, you've got sort of red at the top and it goes all the way around. Well, if you look here, you've got red in the same place, yellows, greens, blues, magentas. So effectively, this is a color wheel. And this line is showing you that it's going to red. Now, the distance from the middle to the outside is showing you the intensity of the color. So the more intense the color, the longer this line will be. And if it's a black or white image, you're just going to have sort of like dots in the middle, uh, it's not going to go out at all. But please note, this is not about brightness, this is about colour or chrominance. Okay, so what is this telling me? Well, there are targets here, and these targets are here for a reason. These are telling me that these are the 75% levels of maximum chrominance, whereas at the moment my test text is at 100% of the maximum chrominance, the maximum colour level it can go at. This is saying that these boxes are at 75% of the maximum chrominance, the maximum colour that you can go to. And actually these boxes are saying you go beyond this and certainly for broadcast you are into illegal colours. You're not broadcast safe anymore. So I can see immediately by looking at this graph that this red is way beyond broadcast safe. But before we go any further, it's important to say that you need to set up your vector scope, in fact you need to set up colour finesse to reflect the system that you're working at. And so before we go any further, let's have a quick look at the preferences, just one or two preferences so that we can get things sorted out. So I want you to go to Edit, Preferences. And I'm only going to pick out a few, I'm not going to go through many. The first one I want to pick up on is on the General tab at the top, where it says Set Limiting On By Default. If you work in a broadcast environment, you want that checked because you want to have limiting on by default. However, if you're working in a film environment where you can have a wider range than is restricted by a broadcast system, then you want that off. I'm working in a broadcast environment, so I'm going to set limiting on by default. The second one is video systems, and this is quite important. What system are you working with? Now, as far as I can remember, Color Finesse ships with NTSC by default. Um, my video colour system is certainly not NTSC, as you can tell by my accent, the very minimum it would be is PAL, Phase Alternating Line, which is the European code, um, but actually I'm working with HD, 
Um, this is HD digital. This bottom one here, by the way, is HD analog, which is very rarely used. So I would go with the HD digital. I've got HDV footage, so this is the one that I'm going to be correcting for. So I'm going to click on that. Um, the video level coding, um, this is a referency type one. So uh, it's saying that at zero, you're at black. At 255, you're at pure white. Um, but some systems require you to say, well, actually, 16 is the equivalent of black and 235 is the equivalent of white. So um, the recommendation is to stay with 0 to 255 unless you know you've got overhead in your footage. And the final one I want to look at is the third tab down, WFM, oblique of VS. And it's this one down the bottom here. It says calibrate vector scope for 100% bars. Generally speaking, you wouldn't select this again, as I say, unless you're working for uh, film. Um, for most broadcasts you want 75% color bars, that's standard, certainly in Premiere Pro and in video editing applications. But just watch what happens at this line when I click Calibrate Vector Scope for 100% bars. Click it and click OK and notice that at maximum saturation of colors it has gone straight to 100%. Now that's no good obviously for my particular requirement. But that's just a demonstration of what we can do. So I'm immediately going to go back to my settings, edit preferences, and I'm going to go to my third tab and I'm going to take off calibrate vector scope for 100% bars because I want it at 75% bars so that when I look at my vector scope I can immediately see if any color is way beyond broadcast safe. Now I'm going to cancel this out and I'm going to go to another example. I'm going to go to my uh, second one which is bars and tone. Now this is a dynamically linked project from Premiere Pro and what I've done is brought in the Premiere Pro bars and tone. The idea being that these are 75% chrominance and I can demonstrate on the vector scope how that looks. So if we select the layer and go to effect and then the last effect you used is always at the top here. So there's SA Color Finesse 3 so I can click on that and then I can click full interface and give it a moment to load. And what you can see are a series of dots. I don't know if you can see them, but these dots are red. It's going to be this bar here. And you can see there's magenta, magenta, etc. And it's showing me that these dots, these color bars at 75%, which are calibration color bars, are absolutely straight inside these target areas for my system. So that I know that my vector scope is accurate because I've brought in these color bars from Premiere Pro and I can see that they're showing exactly where they're supposed to be at 75% which is the maximum level for broadcast safe. Okay the final example I want to show you is using a piece of footage that we've seen before to understand the footage and see where the problems lie. So if I just click OK, cancel out of that, in my project panel I've got a piece of footage you'll have seen before called Close Contact and I click and drag and drop that into the new comp icon and this is the piece of footage. Now previously we've done some work on this. So I'm going to select the footage, go to Effect, SA Color Finesse 3, click that to apply it. Now click to open the full interface. Now I've done a couple of tutorials on this footage before, primary color correction and After Effects, secondary color correction and After Effects. And I've been able to tell you that, for instance, this bucket is massively oversaturated with this large red line that goes off here, way beyond Notar 75% levels. How did I know that? How could I work out what this actually was? Well, I had to create a region of interest to be able to check out the chrominance value of the bit that concerned me. I knew that something was out of here, and it's a fairly safe bet that it is this bucket, but how did I do that? Well, let me just cancel out of this and show you how I did it. Now, the first way you'd have thought of doing it would simply be to use the region of interest button here at the bottom of the composition monitor click on that and then draw into the bucket area and let go and then you'd have thought well that's masked it out all I can see is the region of interest go to the full interface unfortunately the full interface is going to look at the full footage that's not going to be your solution and then cancel out of that there is another synthetic aperture product that would be able to look at just this area with a vector scope and that's called test gear and if you go to the synthetic aperture website and you look up test gear, I think it's something like $95. You can have a floating window for lots of different graphs, but it would include a vector scope. And that vector scope as a floating window would look and respect the region of interest. But unfortunately for what we're trying to do, that's not going to work. So we know that region of interest isn't going to work for us, but if you had test gear, you could be able to do this. But for us, what we need to do is create a mask around the bucket. So let's take our rectangle tool 
and let's create a mask around most of this bucket as much of it as we can get that's probably about it let go and then what we need to do now unfortunately is pre-compose it because if I now go to the full interface again you'll see that it doesn't respect the mask so I need to cancel out of that and in actual fact what I need to do is pre-compose this layer so select the layer go to layer and then right at the bottom pre-compose move all attributes to a new composition yes we're going to do that select the layer and then apply synthetic aperture again apply synthetic aperture open the full interface and then you can see it's looking just at the mast off area and if I go down to the vector scope again you'll see that we clearly know that this is the area that's causing us a lot of problems and that would be the bit that we need to color correct I'm going to close this for a minute and I'm going to go back to the original just by double clicking on the pre-comp to get to the original footage and I'm going to open up the mask and I'm going to change it because what I want to do is I want to move this mask to his skin tones and now I want to just look at his skin tone so I'm going to move this mask and I'm going to reshape it so it just includes his skin because that way I can use the vector scope to check out if our skin tones are as close to the skin tone line as we can get them so again we've got that layer we can go back to our pre-comp and now we can open up color finesse full interface and we can see that our skin tones are close but they're not perfect but rather than changing the skin tone first what you need to do is actually adjust the whole of the footage and so how do we do that I'm going to click OK and I'm going to go back once again to the original footage so I'm just going to delete this mask for the moment and there's my footage and if you remember very quickly this is how we did the changes last time we went to our curves we did black point which was in there we did a white point which was there and we did a grey point which was in his hair there and we ended up changing the footage now we can click OK to apply that to our footage note the change lovely that's applied the footage now we can actually get our mask and draw our mask to check out his skin then we can go back to our pre-comp because of course our pre-comp is going to respect whatever we apply to the layer that's in it and we can open up that color finesse and we can have a look and we can actually see well actually we've shifted off the skin tones quite a bit so we can cancel that go back to the original again open up color finesse we can see that we've got a little bit of movement to do so we can pull this round perhaps pulling it back towards the reds so it's a little bit more on the skin tone but we don't want to overdo it or else we'll end up coloring it a bit and this is what they call push pull you're going to push one thing you're going to pull the other until you get a result that looks about right but you can always go back and check so I can click OK that'll update it I can go back to my composition and I can open up the color finesse for my pre-comp and it'll show me am I closer to the line or am I further away so you get the idea you can push pull by working with a pre-comp and two versions of color finesse one open on the pre-comp which is looking at your region of interest and your original footage which has also got a version of color finesse which you can then move around and play with to get as close to the skin tone line as works for you. Well I hope you found this tutorial useful that you've been able to work out how you can have a region of interest to be able to see as we did the bucket and prove that the bucket is this area here or to be able to look at the skin tones and be able to work between your pre-comp with color finesse applied and your original footage with color finesse applied and the vector scope to see just how close you're getting to where you want to end up. Well my name's Andrew Davis. thanks for watching. Thank you.